Hello, neighbors, and good morning to you, my friends. Welcome or welcome back to the neighborhood. If you are returning, I congratulate you because learning about money is never easy, yet here you are watching again. Look at you. You're a winner and it will show. I am Squealer D and I am back again. And this time, friends, we are back in the world of finance with Mr. Elon Musk right here over to the left. If you look at him, look at him. Look at Elon Musk. We're back here learning about money because Elon Musk should not be the only rich individual, my friends. You should be right up there with Elon Musk. I think so. I think your name should be right here. Elon Musk highlights your name and then say a wonderful article about you. That's how I feel. That's how I feel I should be there. We should all be here instead of Elon Musk because the last time that Elon Musk did something for me was never, never. So first, guys, we're going to talk about this news. I got a little bit of news I want to talk about. And then, you know, we have to talk about the news because what changes with the news? The stocks, guys. If, our, if we're learning to trade stocks, we have to learn what makes stocks tradable or people want to trade. And we know that one of them is the news. People talk about things and then people do it. So they buy it or they sell it because somebody talked about it. How many times did you hear people buy GameStop just because GameStop was all over the news? Some people didn't even know what GameStop were, was. They did not know what type of company GameStop was. I mean, it's evident, obviously, by the name GameStop, but like, oh, it's somewhere where you game. But oh, people, they did not know that GameStop was pretty much one of the only little stores that is just for gamers in all of America that is big enough where it would be in a small town in Kentucky or something like that. So people hear about things and then they buy it. So what I read today and the first thing I read it, and, and everybody takes other things from it, guys. I don't always just take the trading angle because the trading angle isn't our life. We have to take a life angle on some of these things. And that is not to say, guys, everything that we read here and everything that we learn is not to say that we won't take a trade in Elon Musk's Tesla. You know, we're not saying that we won't buy Tesla. If just because we talk bad about Elon Musk or we say something negative about Elon Musk does not mean we have emotions against his, his business, the money part. We might not like what Elon Musk does, but we're not going to stop him by not buying his stocks because everybody else will buy his stocks. So if it fits in your portfolio and it's a moneymaker, I say go for it. You're not going to scare off Elon Musk. I'm not going to scare off Elon Musk. So if it's beneficial to you, you use Elon Musk because guess what he's going to do if you're beneficial to him? He is going to use you. He uses all of our backs in the lithium process. He uses every single um, uh, in the world's back to get lithium for these vehicles so he could sell them at whatever price he wants. So don't you feel bad if you take something off of Elon Musk's back. He probably carries a lot of stuff on his back that he don't even know is back there. So Elon Musk, you know, everybody says he is the man of change, the entrepreneur that's going to change this world. He's going to take us to Mars. Well, first, I would suggest Elon Musk find a different way to run his company, to run his cars. Elon Musk runs his cars on a lithium battery, an EV, electric vehicle battery. All those cars. Uh, what's the other one called? Revlion or Revillion, whatever that car is, REV. All those cars take a lithium battery, guys. Elon Musk needs people to refine lithium because we don't have enough batteries. Well, guess what, guys? We don't have lithium because we don't do lithium refinement, refinement in America much. I think there's only one. We can Google it after this. But lithium refinement for one ton of lithium to extract. If you go and get the lithium and then you extract the lithium out of the environment, 
it takes about a half a million liters of water for one. For one, guys. To extract one ton of lithium requires a half a million liters of water. You know, it, that is so absurd. And, and they say they can reuse it, but they can't reuse it forever. So maybe this one, this, this half a million liters does a couple tons. They recycle it. But guess what? We do. Lithium mines produced an estimated global total of 130,000 metric tons in 2022. So each one of these 130,000 guys, 130,000 of these guys, and they each took a million, uh, half a million liters of water. What, you guys, what? You know how much water that is? And that, that was 2022. 2022, guys. What happens in 2023? How, ma how many liters do you think we used? So it's a half a million. So 500, I'm going to do the calculations for us. 500,000 times 130,000 tons. So 6.5 to the 10. So 10, what is, let me. My calculator said, said uh, write it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. I had to count my zeros, guys. So many zeros and ten. Six hundred and fifty. That's million. Billion. It's billion, guys. Six hundred and fifty billion liters of water. So if you go to the store and buy a one liter of soda, you need 650 billion of those to do one year's worth of lithium. And he's saying that's not enough, guys. How much water do you want to use, Elon? How much water are your cars worth? Because not enough people are buying them. We're talking about going from, from gas to lithium and lithium waste just as much water as fracking and, and anything else that we do. It's not, it's not, he's not helping us guys. He's just selling us something. He's just selling us something that is also environmentally bad. Is lithium refiring bad for the environment? Lithium extraction inevitably harms the soil and causes air contamination. You see that? Nobody, how many years of lithium is left? 10 to 20 years, guys. So why are we making lithium cars? Why? Why are we wasting 650 billion liters of water in a year to make something that the lithium will be gone in the next 10 to 20 years? Why? Why are we building up these cars? What are we going to do with the hard... The, if the car only needs the battery to run, right? But the lithium is going to run out in 10 to 20 years. Why make the car? How are you going to run it after the lithium runs out? You're going to have this big hunk of metal to what? Sit on your desk and be a, and be a, a paperweight? Like, guys, we got to think this stuff through just like we have to think the market through. I tell you guys this kind of stuff to get you interested in the world around you. Like, we have to care about this stuff. And, and that's not to say, like I already told you, I'm not saying don't buy this. Don't buy Elon Musk. Don't, don't, you know, invest in his company. Because we're already effed. If there's only, if there is only 10 years left of lithium, we're already effed. How many cars, how many, how many cars did Elon Musk sell? 10 years from now, they'll be no good. You can't put a replacement battery in them if the lithium is gone. And we have more and more. Um, EV vehicles now everybody's making EV vehicles so when they're all using the lithium it might not be 10 years it might be five years what happens if you buy a Tesla and in five years you can't replace the, bat the battery your batteries all need replaced within five years I've heard so many people say that especially in the Hondas if you buy a Honda you pretty much within five years will need new batteries so now what now you just get a new car and I understand the gas is an issue, too. So what are we going to be driving these cars around? When we run out of natural gas and we run out of lithium, wh what are we going to do with all these cars that are just sitting all around? We have to think about that stuff for our children. And unless we start asking those questions right now, like, what is Elon Musk doing? 
He's asking, urging entrepreneurs to learn to refine lithium. That is not, if you are an entrepreneur and you are really, really smart, do not waste your time refining something that only has a 10 to 20 year. Why? Why would he ask a young entrepreneur? We need more lithium. Why would he ask a young entrepreneur to waste their life doing something for the next 10 years and then be done and not be able to do it anymore? Elon Musk is a very selfish man. He expects us to live poor and live in squalor that his company makes while he lives like that. Like, open your eyes, people. We're going to be dead in 10 to 20 years because we're not going to have any water. 650 billion liters, guys, billion with a B every year. How, how many years do you think he, that we can, how many years do you think we can use 650 billion liters of water? You guys let me know in the comments. How many years we got doing that? So, I got the coffee. D for De Niro, guys, because we are about to learn to make it. And when I get rich, I'll be the type of person, you guys will see me out here battling Elon Musk. I'm, I'm going to challenge Elon Musk. I'm, it'll be, we'll be old by then. You know, like 10 years from now when things are really falling apart, I'm going to ch challenge Elon Musk. I'm going to be rich. Challenge him to a, like a battle royale. Not to the death. You know, I'm an old person. I, I, like, paintball challenge. Elon Musk, challenge me to paintball fight. If you lose, you shut up forever. And if I lose, I'll shut up forever. It'd be a good deal, guys. Everybody would win regardless. If I shut up, if Elon Musk shut up, it, it'll, be a good, it'll be a good fight. A fight to the quiet. Okay, so... We're done. We're done with Elon Musk for the day. He's a user. Elon Musk touched upon many themes on Tesla's recent earning calls, one of which was the lack of lithium refining options. So we sent all the Africans to the mines so they can get more lithium. I said I was done with him, but I can't. I just can't be done. So. Let us look, guys, at our recently viewed symbols and see if any of them are big changes. We got BBY. They said BBBY, guys. We're going to click on it because they said they're going bankrupt. It's the result of a series of bad miscalculations the over the years. On the How Depends did Bed Bath & Beyond not make it, in but Home Store or whatever the heck that one store is called? How did it make it? Depends. But not Bed Bath and Beyond. Is it just because it was too, it was too richy for people? It was too expensive, because I've been into Home Store and Home Goods and all those stores a million times on these, on these videos, and it doesn't look any different than Bed Bath and Beyond, other than the fact that Bed Bath and Beyond has more items. Like if you go into Home Goods, it's got like things to decorate your house, but Bed Bath and Beyond has actual things for your house. It's not to decorate. Bed Bath and Beyond has like a spatula and a pan and a towel and a blanket. But Home Goods has like a picture frame and a mirror and a horse that you put on your fireplace. I don't know. They have like knickknacks. So are people more caring about knickknacks in their house than actually fixing up their house? Is that why Bed Bath & Beyond failed? They said bad business bad miscalculations man really all they would have to do is just be cheaper right sell cheaper stuff to these people who just want cheap shit crazy chapter 11 we learned about bankruptcy guys chapter 11 that's for businesses well okay so what about amc AMC is down to 481, guys. Entertainment Holdings. Got GameStop down to $20. GameStop been on a crazy ride. Look at this. So GameStop is at 20. They've been down here for a minute. They were at 40. They were sitting high. They were up here at, come on, $57. And that was barely uh, last uh, 2021 when everybody was doing good. <coughs> Excuse me. So, 
every, let's see, what's Amazon today? Amazon's down a bit, 105. And remember, guys, this is volume down here of how many people are trading. So you can see the volume of Amazon people. These are people that are in the trades, active trading. And this is a this is a big map, one week, week map. So you can look at the one minute map and see that even on the one minute map, we have a lot of volume down here, people trading. And if you pop over to something like, I don't know, Saito that we looked at, which is um, the Altamira Therapeutics, it's only at a dollar one. You see how there's less volume. There's always going to be less volume in the lower in the symbols that are worth less. If it's worth less than five dollars, not a lot of people are going to be in it all the time. Like here's one, a dollar sixty eight. It's uh, Finance of America companies, and this one you can see the volume is even less. So if we bop into something, mm, who 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 who? How about this one? This is a uh, RLX technology. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what they do. But they had some movement. But not a lot. You know, it's not like Amazon where it's all the way across. So what's SI? Silvergate Capital. And also you can see just the lower, it's lower volume. So just to remember, guys, that down there, what does that mean? That means volume. So we can close this. We know how lithium produces waste, uses our water, and nobody cares. So what I'm thinking, guys, is we need to start banging out our trading plan. And a trading plan is what we will follow every single day in our journal. Every single trade we make, we will follow a trading plan. And let me show you what trading plan is template so we can get an idea and I'm going to make us one of these and you can this is somebody's here 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 we go let's see Zach Zach Hartley made one can I come on I need to see a big Zach so Zach made us one it's zero dollars like you could get a pdf copy of his trading plan for free what a nice guy Zach is so Zach's trading plan ours will be something like this guys and I will make it pretty for us, too, just like Zach did. But I'm not going to put a, a building behind it. I want it to be clean and clear for us. And I also want you to be able to write in. So I'm going to have spaces for you to write in what you want because this is going to be part of our journal. So let's check out Zach's. He has a morning checklist. Is he mentally prepared? Is he physically prepared? What was his past for performance? What are the market conditions? That's his morning checklist. That's a good checklist, guys. If you're not mentally prepared to trade for the day, you don't have to. You know, the great thing about being in this type of business is you can miss the day. You can. You're not going to die if you miss the day of the market. So if you're not mentally prepared or physically prepared, maybe your back hurts. You're not going to make a good trade if your back hurts really bad. Maybe just put some ice on it and take a rest for the day. Your past performance, this one's important, guys. If you look at your past performance, you will have better future performance. It's a proven fact. They have proven it. If you are any type of performer, I'm talking any type of performer, and you watch your past performance, you will do better on your next one. You will see things you messed up on, and you will fix it, and you will do better. It's proven. So check out your past performance and the market conditions. And that, guys, is the news every day. Check it out and check out what the condition is of whatever we're trading that day because we'll have it in our little heads. We're not going to know. We're not just going to go in blindly trading. That's, that's not having a trading plan. So he's got some trading goals. He wants 1% per day, 5 to 10 of trades, 50% win rate, and a half, a 1 to 2 risk return ratio. So for every dollar, he wants $2 back. That's his return ratio goal. So... He's going to do 20% max size. So the max of the, like if he has $100, 20% of $100 is all he's going to risk. He's only going to look at five industries. And we haven't talked about this, guys, yet. Making our, our windows of what we look at littler. 
Sometimes you get overwhelmed when you look out a big giant window. You've never looked out of it before. It's a lot to look at, you know. There might be a lot of pretty things outside. There might be a train wreck. There might be a lot of things to look at. So if you small the window, you know, you, you just take an airplane window that you slide up and you look out, you might only be able to see a piece of the sky. That's kind of what this is talking about, looking at five industries. So he's only looking at a piece of the stock market, not all of it. And that helps with risk management because you can know your, your industry better. And you guys all know industries. I know certain industries. You know certain industries. I know healthcare industries because I was in healthcare for years and years and years. So it might make sense for me to watch the healthcare industry for trades because I understand it. You might understand the woodworking industry um, and like construction. I don't, I, my dad was in all of that. And so if I look at um, a building, I can understand things, but I don't know the beginning thing about investing in construction, construction, like the business of construction. So hard stop loss. We talk about this all the time. We will have a hard stop loss. Ours will probably be like, he doesn't say it, but like 8%. Like I don't want to lose 8%, over 8% of of a trade. So if we go in with a hundred dollars, I don't want to lose eight dollars. Once we lose eight dollars, we bop out. We we sell. It's okay. Hard loss. Try again. So the entry, he's looking for a double bottom. We learned about this, guys. It's the big W. It's clear. It's, does it have clear support? Is it a good company? Is it increasing in volume? We look at the volume across the bottom. Is the volume increasing? Do, is more people buying it? Look at the volume numbers. Is, is it more? Look at the MACD and the RSI confirmation. Is it between, you know, did the MACD cross over? Did it break out? Does it have clear resistance? Does it have a strong breakout? Is it above the moving average? What about the MACD and the RSI on this one? So that's where we entry. That's our entry point. You have to have good entry points, guys. You have to know where you're going to enter. Otherwise, you're going to enter at the wrong spot. And what happens when you enter in the wrong spot? Usually, not anything good. You don't get to go in through the exit and see the show. You go in through the exit and you're going to catch security, right? So we want a good entry, a good exit, stop loss, just below support. So if it's just below support, remember the support line, guys, you know it doesn't break out down below that, but if it does, you'll sell. So that makes sense. He's going to convert to a trailing stop when profitable. And we learned what a trailing stop was, that it raises up as the, so that you're not cutting your, your wins. You're cutting your losses, but with a trailing stop, you're not cutting your wins. You might say, well, it looks like, like let's say we're right here. You say, we don't even know this, the this half of them, this half, we haven't even seen it yet. Let's say we're right here and you're selling, selling, you're buying, you, you bought it. You say, yeah, look at it. Look at this big green candle. Look at this great green giant. It's going up. It's going to go up. And so you move your trailing stop loss. So that if it goes up to here, you're going to keep selling. You can move your trailing stop loss up. So if it goes up here, you're going to keep selling off. You'll be selling off little bits as you go. Because if it drops back down, it wants to all be sold before it drops back down. It's called a trailing stop loss. So you could keep making money as it goes up. You don't want to cut your profit. So they've made a way for that. So he has a good idea there to exit. Do not move your stop loss. And I showed you guys how to do that yesterday. Remember, you just grab it and you move it. And we'll, I'll show you again that today, today. But if you have an exit strategy, you don't move that. That's for learning purposes. If you set your stop loss and you say, I'm not going to go below this, don't go below it. You made rules, follow your rules. It's okay. Max 15% loss. So he's saying 15, I'm real scary. And I say 8%. That's what I'm thinking for, for, for my risk management. I'm thinking 8%. 8% seems like maybe 10, but, but maybe by the time I'm done, I'll say 10. But right now it's like eight because we have to think about it this way, guys. If we had $50,000, right off the bat to bet to to uh, invest right now, then I would probably say 15% loss on any position. But because you're only starting with $1,000, if you have big loss and big bets or big, big investments, 
What are you going to have left? Nothing. So if that investment goes bad, you're going to be back at zero waiting to save up $1,000 again to get back in the market. And we don't want that. We want no wait time. So it's best to not make any moves with your $1,000 than to make big, unsupported, don't fit in your trading plan type of moves. Just don't do it. You make moves that are small and very, very planned. When you have a little bit of money, I don't, you know, if you're poor and you go to the theme park with your children, usually you have that money planned. You say, okay, it's going to cost us $100 to get in the gate and it's going to cost us $200 for food for the day. So I have $300. That means I only have $50 for them to spend on souvenirs. Okay, that's your, that's your trading plan. You're going to walk into that, into that park and you're only going to spend that amount of money you don't have anymore. So that's what we need to do with our trading. You need to make the plan. Well, we have this much for for fun and this much for food and this much for souvenirs. And you have to stick to that because you can't just keep taking money. So review, upload trades to your trading journal. And I'm going to check out a bunch of online trading journals. I don't have one yet, but we definitely want to have um, paper trading journals. This is just my notebook. I have this size for the notebook size paper trading or journal size but i'm thinking that i'm going to get me like a notebook folder and i'm just going to put pieces of paper that i print in there so that i can have a printout of the trading plan and a printout of our journal every day Because it's really important to write down our trades, guys. It's very, very, very important you write down every trade you make once we start with the trading. Right now, I'm just showing examples of trading, so we're not writing them down. But when we are buying and selling stocks to make money, we have to write down our entry, our exits, what we were thinking, and really monitor how we're learning So we don't make the same mistakes over and over again, because we will make mistakes, guys. There will be mistakes in entry, mistakes in exit, mistakes with our risk management, times we make the wrong, um, like maybe we make it a market instead of a a trailing stop and we lose the money. That is going to happen. But if we write it down and we put it in our journal and we go back and look at our past performance, you know, for the week, we're not going to make that same mistake. So we write everything down and that is our goal. So, hold on one second. My nose is so itchy today. Okay. 10 steps to building a winning trading plan. There's an old expression in business that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It may sound glib. But people that are serious about being successful, including traders, should follow those words as if they're written in stone. Ask any trader who makes money on a consistent basis, and they will probably tell you that, they have t- that you have two choices. Methodically follow a written plan or fail. If you already have a written trading or investment plan, congratulations, you are in the minority. It takes time, effort, and research to develop an approach or methodology that works in financial markets. While there are never any guarantees of success, you have eliminated one major roadblock by creating a detailed trading plan. Having a plan is essential for achieving trading success. A trading plan should be written in stone, but is subject to reevaluation and can be adjusted along with changing market conditions. A solid trading plan considers the trader's personal style and goals. Knowing when to exit a trade is just as important as knowing when to enter the position. Stop loss prices and profit targets should be added to the trading plan to identify specific exit points for each trade. If your plan uses flawed techniques or lacks preparation, your success won't come immediately, but at least you're in a position to chart and modify your course. By documenting the process, you learn what works and how to avoid the the costly mistakes that newbie traders sometimes face. Whether or not you have a plan now, here are some ideas to help you with the process. So trading is a business. So you have to treat it as such if you want to succeed. Reading a few books, buying a charting program, opening a brokerage account, and starting to trade with real money is not a business plan. It's more like a recipe for disaster. A plan should be written. 
with clear signals that are not subject to change while you're trading, but subject to reevaluation when the markets are closed. The plan can change with market conditions and might see adjustments as the trader's skill level improves. Each trader should write their own plan, taking into account personal trading styles and goals. Using someone else's plan does not reflect your trading characteristics. That's why, my friends, I will make us a template like Zach's and I will leave it empty and you will put your trading goals and you will put your risk management in your morning checks. And I will show you mine every day. If you would like to see it every day, I will show you every day. And that is why we are learning to make our own trading plan, guys, because what did he say if we don't? That it's a recipe for disaster. So no two trading plans are the same because no two traders are exactly alike. Each approach will reflect important factors like trading style as well as risk tolerance. So what are other essential components of a solid trading plan? Here are 10 that every plan should include. Skill assessment. Are you ready to trade? Have you tested your system by paper trading it? And do you have confidence that it will work in a live trading environment? Can you follow your signals without hesitation? Trading the markets is a battle of give and take. The real pros are prepared and take profits from the rest of the crowd who, lacking a plan, generally give money away after costly mistakes. Mental preparation. How do you feel? Did you get enough sleep? Do you feel up to the challenge ahead? If you're not emotionally and psychologically ready to do battle in the market, take the day off. Otherwise, you risk losing your shirt. This is almost guaranteed to happen if you're angry, preoccupied, or otherwise distracted from the task at hand. Many traders have a market mantra. They repeat before the day begins to get them ready. Create one that puts you in the trading zone. Additionally, your trading area should be free of distractions. Remember, this is a business and distractions can be costly. Set risk level. How much of your portfolio should you risk in one trade? This will depend on your trading style and tolerance for risk. The amount of risk can vary, but should probably range from around 1% to 5% of your portfolio on a given trading day. That means if you lose that amount at any point in the day, you get out of the market and stay out. It's better to take a break and then fight another day if things aren't going your way. Set goals. Before you enter a trade, set realistic prof profit targets and risk-reward ratios. What's the minimum risk-reward you, you will accept? Many traders will not take a trade unless the potential profit is at least three times greater than the risk. For example, if your stop loss is a dollar per share, your goal should be a $3 per share in profit. Set weekly, monthly, and annual profit goals in dollars or as a percent of your portfolio and reassess them regularly. Do your homework. Before the market opens, do you check what is going on around the world? Are overseas markets up or down? Are SP500 index futures up or down in the pre-market? Index futures are a good way of gouging the mood before the market opens because futures, con futures contracts trade day and night. What are the economic or earnings data that are due out and when? Post a list on the wall in front of you and decide whether you want to trade ahead of an important report. For most traders, it's better to wait until the report is released rather than taking unnecessary risk associated with trading during the volatile reactions to reports. Pros trade based on probabilities. They don't gamble. Trading ahead of an important report is often a gamble because it's impossible to know how markets will react. So trade preparation. Whenever trading system and program you use, label major and minor support and resistance levels on the chart. Set alerts for entry and exit signals and make sure all signals can be easily seen or detected with a clear visual or auditory signal. Set exit rules. Most traders make the mistake of concentrating most on their efforts on looking for buy signals, but pay very little attention to when and where to exit. Many traders can not sell if they are down because they don't want to take a loss. Get over it. Learn to accept losses or you will not make it as a trader. If your stop gets hit, it means you were wrong. Don't take it personally. Professional traders lose more trades than they win, but they manage but by managing money and limiting losses, they still make profits. Risk management, guys. If you say for the day I'm only going to lose what did he say up here 1% and you have $50,000, take the day off and you're not going to lose anything. You lost a day of trade, no big deal. So before you enter a trade, you should know your exits. There are at least two possible exits for every trade. 
First, what is your stop loss if the trade goes against you? It must be written down. Mental stops don't count. Second, each trade should have a profit target. Once you get there, sell a portion of your position and you can move your stop loss on the rest of your position to the break even point if you wish. Set entry rules. This comes after the tips for exit rules for a reason. Exits are far more important than entries. And I'm going to tell you guys one more time about my exit story. I bought options and I did not know how to sell an option. And when I came back, my option that I bought for like $50, it was up to $4,000. But I lost every single dollar and some by not knowing how to sell my option. I didn't know how to do it on Ameritrade. On Thinkorswim, I just didn't know how. I Googled it and nobody could tell me how to trade. And by the time I figured it out, I had lost all the money in the option because they have a time limit. So know your exit rules before you get in. And that is for anything. Guys, if you go somewhere, know how to get out of it. If you go to a club, know where the exit is. What happens if somebody starts shooting, heaven forbid? You need to know where the exit is. Okay? Know your exit rules. Have an exit buddy. And way to get out, guys. A typical entry rule could be worded like this. If signal A fires and there's a minimum target at least three times as great as my stop loss and we are at a support, then buy X contracts or shares here. So if it goes to a minimum number and at least three times as great as my stop loss and we are at support, then we can buy here. Your system should be complicated enough to be effective, but simple enough to facilitate snap decisions. <coughs> if you have 20 conditions that must be met and many are subjective, you will find it difficult, if not impossible, to actually make trades. In fact, computers often make better traders than people, which may explain why most of the trades that now occur on major stock exchanges are generated by computer programs. Computers don't have to think or feel good to make a trade. If conditions are met, they enter. When the trade goes the wrong way or hits a, a profit target, they exit. They don't get angry at the market or feel invincible after making a few good trades. Each decision is based on probability, not emotion. Keep excellent records. Many experienced and successful traders are also excellent at keeping records. If they win a trade, they want to know exactly why and how. More importantly, they want to know the same when they lose, so they don't repeat unnecessary mistakes. Write down details such as targets, the entry and exit of each trade, the time, support and resistance levels, daily opening range, market open and close for the day, and record comments about why you made the trade, as well as the lessons learned. And that is our journal, guys. We are going to write down those things, targets. I'm going to make it, and you're going to write it in. You should also save your trading records so that you go back and analyze the profit or loss for a particular system. Drawdowns, which are amounts lost per trade using a trading system. Average time per trade, which is necessary to calculate trade efficiency. And other important factors. Also, compare these factors to a buy and hold strategy. Remember, this is a business and you are the accountant. You want your business to be as successful and profitable as possible. 75% the percentage of day traders that quit within two years. 75% guys, you know why? Because they let fear and what? Greed, which are emotions, control them. After each trading day, adding up the profit or loss is secondary to knowing the why and how. Write down your conclusions in your trading journal so you can reference them later. Remember, there will always be losing trades. What you want is a trading plan that wins over the long term. So for instance, guys, if your loss is only, let's say, 3%, that was the highest, it went to 1% to 3%, say you're willing to lose 3%, but each of your trades, you're aiming to, to get out, well, I said 8%, let's, so let's say 8%. If you lose 8%, but you're tripling other, other wins, like, let's say you invest and you get better than 8% back. Let's say you get 10% back and you do that and then you do that again and you do that again and then you do it and you lose. And you followed your, you followed your plan and you got out with an 8% loss. All of your other wins, if you follow your trading, all of your wins will cover up for that 8% loss and it won't be a real loss. So... 
Successful practice trading does not guarantee you will find success when you begin trading real money. That's when emotions come into play. But successful practice trading does give the trader confidence in the system they are using. If the system is generating positive results in a practice environment, deciding on a system is less important than gaining enough skill to make trades without second guessing or doubting the decision. Confidence is key. There is no way to guarantee a trade will make money. The trader's chances are based on their skill and system of winning and losing. There's no such thing as winning without losing. Professional traders know before they enter a trade that the odds are in their favor or they wouldn't be there. By letting their profits ride and cutting losses short, a trader may lose some battles, but they will win the war. Most traders and investors do the opposite, which is why they don't consistently make money and 75% of them quit within two years. Traders who win consistently treat trading as a business. While there is no guarantee that you will make money, having a plan is crucial if you want to be consistently successful and survive in the trading game. Okay, so you heard it here first, guys. Don't let your emotions get to you. How many times have you lost money anyway without trading? It's really not that big of a deal is the way I look at it. So that is what we got, we're working on is building ourselves a trading template right here. We're going to have a trading template. We're going to fill it out, make our own rules. We're going to have a trading journal. And every single day starting this week, probably by the end of the week, we'll have it made. And next week we will trade, we'll do practice trades and use all of our new systems so that we can form. If we do that for a couple weeks, guys, if we, if we have our trading plan and every day we add to our trading plan and reform it, we write in our journal every day about all of our trades. Within a couple weeks, we should have a working trading plan that is making money on our interactive, what is it, paper trader. So that's the plan for now. I hope you're ready. I am definitely ready. And we'll close Zach's. Thanks, Zach. Thank you, Zach, for, for a wondrous uh, trading plan. So I, before we go, it was a nice, it was a nice article, guys. Always like Investopedia articles. Old Matt Blackman, he told us all about a plan. So I'll pop on Think or Swim real quick, guys. Let's look at, oh, look at BuzzFeed. It had a little, little, a little thing there. Let us throw a study up on it quick study there's let's throw rsi on it we haven't done that one lower step i'm gonna tell you what i don't like these little drop downs i don't let me throw the rsi on it where'd it go right here so this is a resistance line and it's above it you see Let's throw a MACD on it. MACD. Right there. So that's the MACD. And remember, it's the blue line. I kind of wish this, this little part was bigger or, or something. Can I make it bigger? No. Oh, look at, look at me. I made it bigger. Yay. So, if the MACD is above, it's probably growing. If it's below, it's probably going to dip. Yeah, we're learning things, guys. And then, let us look and see if it has a flag. So, we can pull this back down. Highlight it up. Highlight it up. So, it's not like a pennant. It's going straight up. I don't know how to throw. This is where we got to get good, guys. We got to learn how to throw these on quick so that we can add a study. What are we going to add? I don't know, but I, I, I do wish that it was upper studies. Was it an upper study or a lower study? For... So many studies, guys. Too cr 
crows. I never heard of two crows. I can't get to it. Where's two crows? I didn't see where I put it. It says two crows, but I don't know. We're going to have to Google two crows because I don't, I don't know what two crows are. But either way, guys, that was it for today. We're not going to do any trades. We're just learning about our plan. And I am going to start getting it drawn up so we can start trading per our risk plan. We don't want to just trade and get bad habits. We want to make a good plan and have good trading habits, guys. It's important. It's very important to have good trading habits from the beginning. If you learn to ride a bike and you don't learn to ride it correctly, you're probably going to make mistakes down the road. You wouldn't become a professional bike racer if you learn how to ride the bike with bad habits. So in order to become a professional bike racer, we have to learn to ride the bike with only good habits. So here we are learning to ride with good habits, okay? So until next time, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope all of the money comes your way. Until next time. Oh, 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 I will be here tomorrow, guys, in the morning. Our money talks are always in the morning. If you miss it, it will be in the, por in the folder called Stock Market Learning. And right now, guys, there's 20 parts in there. Today is number 20. So it's not a lot. Each one is anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour long. And each one gives you invaluable information on life and money. So bop on, check out the ones you missed, catch on up and be ready because we are getting almost to the point where we're going to be making trades every single day and you don't want to miss those. Okay. Get yourself this. You see this, what I got? This is called think or swim. It's free guys. 100% free simulated trading. This money, fake money paper money guys we got a 20 minute time delay from the real from the real stock market but we get to do anything that the real stock market can do we can do here and we will learn so until next time have a great day be here tomorrow and that's it bye guys <laughs>